clipping the edges. Now I can take this pump, put it down into my reservoir. <coughs> Take this reservoir, move it right up underneath my table. I can take the exit lines, and throw them into the reservoir. And she's ready for some plants. Did I say I was done? Apparently not. I haven't plugged it in yet. I water my plants three times a day, so I have a quick on and off switch three times a day during the daylight hours. Timer goes into the wall. It's going to power the pump. The pump's down here attached to this hot hose. The hose is going to sit in the middle here. It's going to deliver the water to all eight of these little spikes, which is going to give water to the plants. It's going to drain right out of our drainage holes right back to the reservoir where it's going to get pumped back to the plants again. Easy. Now I have everything I need for my vegetative grow room. Air, water with this hydroponic system, and light with these four foot fluorescents. This is the perfect growing environment. I can start growing right now, but I'm going to start building the flowering room first. Now I'm going to begin construction of the flowering room. First, I'm going to need to bring in some electricity. While I'm at it, I'm going to put up this thermometer right here because temperature is so important I always have to know what's going on anything above 95 degrees is deadly the first thing I want to do is put up my 400 watt high pressure sodium lights before I do that I need to put up some hooks now all I need to do is hang up this hood and ballast now that my hood and my ballast are in place, I'm going to take this 430 watt high pressure sodium with blue spectrum and I'm going to make sure that there's no fingerprint oil on the bulb. If there is, it'll burn the bulb out immediately and explode. Ugly. I'm going to come right up here and screw it in. Now all I have to do is plug in my 400 water to this timer that I've set for 12 hours a day. I plug this bad boy into the wall. Hmm. Let's give her some juice. Takes a minute to warm up. Because my flowering room is enclosed, I really need to focus on air movement. With the buds in here that I'm going to have, they can mold or fungus up in a matter of days if I don't have a lot of free moving air. So along with this oscillating fan, I also use a squirrel cage fan. Squirrel cages are great at pulling air. So what I do is hang this in the middle of my room and I attach this four inch dryer hose to the end of it. And then I attach the end of my dryer hose to a vent leading outside. I hang it with some bungees and I've already placed some screws above me. It hangs
hangs that easy, I need to plug it in. set up the table right up underneath the light. I've constructed a drip irrigation hydroponic system here in my vegetative grow room. In contrast to the ebb and flow hydroponic system I want to build for my flowering room. Here's the difference between the two. Over here in my vegetative room I grow using these four inch cubes. Every cube has a dripper. Three times a day, the pump turns on and the plants get fed. In contrast to the ebb and flow system, which is a planter that is filled with water three times a day, the root bowl is inside these little orchid potting pellets and the water is drained right back here into the reservoir. Now I'm going to put together my ebb and flow hydroponic system for my flowering room. I've got all the parts I need to put this thing and make it in tip-top working order. I have two black vinyl hoses, just like I used for the other one. Uh, Five-eighths outer diameter and a half-inch inner diameter. And they're about three feet long. I have a pump that'll fit onto the black tubing. Timer, aquarium silicone, three one-inch nozzles, some screen, small zip ties, and a five-inch piece of three-quarter outer diameter and five-eighths inner diameter hose which I'm going to put into the nozzle like that and when my planter reaches a certain level it's going to drain back to the reservoir right here. I have my planter. I've cut two one inch holes for two nozzles and I've also cut out two holes in my table so the nozzles will fit right in there no problem. Clean potting uh, rock pellets. And a 20 gallon plastic tub. I'm going to drill one. I'm going to drill one one inch hole. I'm going to clean that off. And this is going to be my return line from, for my overfill line for my planter. And then the other one's going to hook up to my pump and it's going to pump it up. So now I'm just going to put it together. I'm loading the corners up with aquarium silicone. And I'm screwing in my one inch little nozzle. <laughs> I tighten the nut and tight's good enough. Silicone around the edges. Silicone around the edges of the inside. I drilled the hole at the bottom of the reservoir so that gravity will push water back down into this tank when it hits a certain level in the planet.